Hi, and welcome to another Earth Science Classroom video, and we're in plate tectonics. And we've looked at previous videos on uh, the history and timeline of continental drift, seafloor spreading, paleomagnetism, the development of the plate tectonics um, scientific process, I like to call it basically, is a massive process which involves the entire crustal morphology and history of the Earth's surface and how it's changing very slowly, yet over, over long periods of time, it has considerable effect on uh, the landscape, uh, terrain, topography, and uh, landforms. So we're looking at margins, right? So if I just draw quickly, draw a side view, a profile view of, let's have an ocean. All right, let's put a little ocean in here. All right. And let's put a little continent in here. All right. And we'll get the seafloor, ocean crust, and we'll put in a mid ocean ridge. And we'll have over here, we'll have another ocean, let's say. And there is this happening. All right, so there will be the, the two crusts, and we'll have the uh, lithosphere right here. Okay, so we'll have the moho up here. So this line will be the moho, and this will be the moho right here. And we'll have the this extending down, and the mo uh, sorry lithosphere right here. That. And below that, obviously, would be the asthenosphere. So we'd have our rise in magma, our convection currents. All right, going that way. And then we'd have this situation right here, where we have our convergence and our convergent plate boundaries right here. and Let's just use this as a small little ocean here as well. Oh, no. Let's just let's try again. Add in our ocean. There we go. Let's call this the Pacific. Let's call this the Atlantic. And obviously, we have our mid ocean ridge, which we can use PES in 62, 63. There we go. And obviously, right smack in the middle of it, we have the continent of North America, okay? So on the east coast, over here, and on the west coast, over here. So we're talking about a margin. A margin really is the edge of a continent. And it's where it meets water, or in this case, two big oceans. And there are two types of margins, as shown by the title. There's passive and there is active. So quick, um, let's ID them. So this area right here in this box, okay, this will be our passive type of margin. And over here, in this box, we'd have our active. So again, I have isolated the area around where the continent meets the ocean, and we call this a margin. It is the part of the land which goes under and forms the ocean floor, the ocean crust. Again, I've drawn where the continent is thicker. Again, this is granite, and the ocean crust is thin and mostly basaltic. So this video is all about comparing these two types of margins, the morphology, the formation, and what we can take from uh, each layer of each part as well. All right, so let's break down what a continental margin is. So it basically is in three parts. And three parts is the continental rise, the continental slope, and the continental 
shell. Now, if drawn out, say I draw a side view again, I love my side views. I do my side view, I get a little ocean here. There we go. And my ocean floor. Now, now for the ocean floor, this is called the abyssal plane. Abyssal plane. It's a flat area kind of adjacent to the mid-ocean ridges. And it's, it's obviously a very large part of the ocean floor. And as we get closer to the coastline, okay, let's just use the coastline right here. Okay. And there will be, no, that's a bit too hard, right here. Coastline down here. So get down to the beach. And then we get the continental shelf. And then it goes into the slope. Yeah, let's do a bit of that. Let's try and get accurate there, and then the slope, and then the rise. Okay, so it's three kind of sections. And this is maybe the ocean. Come on. So this would be your coastline. And you'd have all the coastal processes areas, and this would be your shelf your slope and your rise right here and it rise and basically it's the first part where you start to increase the uh, the gradient up towards the coastline and this is kind of the idealistic or perfect kind of passive margin Now, I'm linking this up to Wilson's 1966 cycle, where he discussed the opening of um, a one supercontinent where the crust is a hole, it's one solid crust. And it breaks up uh, through forcing, through convection currents, through uprising of magma, and it breaks and separates the crust and starts to divide and, and move away. The crust and then you get subsidence you get depressions forming you get this graven or graben formation where it falls down as it's being pulled apart through tensional forces and what's left is you have the sides of the continents and then there's your ridge so the other same on the other side, you have this kind of like stretched tensional tensional forces applied, and here is uh graven half graven on this side or full graven on both sides, and you have your ridge right here, your spread in the center. This is how it kind of links up with Wilson's cycle. And we're looking at the formation of, of, a, of an ocean and the development and, and kind of like historical timeline of this part where the continent is the, old, the older crust versus the newer crust, which is formed. And then you have all these different layers and faults, these ancient faults, that are formed because of the tensional forces from the initial rifting. So this is all because of the rifting. And this is looking at the mature stage of the Wilson cycle. So you have a mature ocean, you have the ocean continent, continent uh, boundary or margin, and this is a passive margin. Okay. Now, a passive margin does not have, there's no volcanism. There's no volcanism, okay? All right, right now, there's no vol. Oh, actually, my fault. There is volcanism. Ha ha. And we'll get to that in a minute. But some have volcanism. Some do not. Some have no volcanism. However, this would be ancient volcanism. So it's not currently active. Whereas if we had um subduction currently at a conal margin or plate boundary then you'd have 
um, active volcanism. And we do not have this, the little big, big cross on, don't have this. There is no subduction in a passive margin. So what I've drawn here is a typical passive margin where there is no volcanism. And you have these ancient faults caused by the rifting uh, during the, the uh, early stage of the Wilson cycle. And you have the older crust, part of the original crust, the supercontinent, maybe like Pangaea. And we have the newer ocean crust formed from rising basaltic magma and lava flows. Um, and you do have volcanism here in the rift, but not over here um, in the actual margin. Now, what we're looking at is this, this, this bit of yellow right here is all newer sedimentary rock. Now, the profile or relief or how high the terrain is on the passive margin is very low. There's low relief. Okay, it's not very high mountains. Everything is uh, weathered and eroded, and that would cause a lot of fluvial systems streams, rivers, lakes, um, to flow down with gravity, uh, both above ground and below ground as groundwater, and start to flow and, uh, you know, sedimentology. So the sedimentary rocks form, and that's the yellow. And that forms the Connell Shelf, rise and slope, as seen by one, two, three, as listed above. So you have this, you know, existing igneous and metamorphic basement rock maybe it's basaltic here and basaltic down here but up here will be more granitic and then on the top here where the actual it's called the hinge section this is the transitional section it's where you have the uh the, the, the changeover from purely basaltic uh crust that's thin into more of a mixture Basaltic, more granitic, more diorite, and some andesite uh, in the continents that are thicker right there. So the transitional zone or crust is right there. So you'd have this layer of sediment, and also it's the thickest right above the transition zone. And this would be classic. You'd have the, um, the deltas, the estuaries, the bays, the inlets all going off through the continental shelf. You'd have ancient uh, submarine canyons submarine deltas uh, based on sea level which can rise and fall based on climate and uh, Malakovich cycles so you have this formation of this very low and very easy uh, passive Connell margin so let's change gears for a second we've done passive we looked at the Wilson cycle the opening of oceans the, the different stages the four stages of how this works now on the other end where that continent is going to meet an ocean and there's going to be a difference in density where two plates meet so now we're discussing a actual boundary so this continental margin is really a boundary a boundary between two plates one is continental and the other is ocean and we're looking at a convergent plate boundary. Convergent mean that both of them go towards each other. Now, we're going to, as, a, as videos all on this with more detail, but with an active um, canal margin, we do have consistent, not just ancient, but consistent volcanism. Okay, if you have your uh, thin ocean crust right here, and we have then subduction, okay, at the Moho right here. We have subduction going down. And we have our thicker uh, continental crust. I'll just draw it in green for a second, okay. And then there's our thicker continental crust. And then we have our lithosphere right here, okay, of similar width. And this is going to float up. It's less dense. It's on average 2.7 grams per centimeter cube, whereas the ocean is 3 grams. So 
basic density differences. Heavy one's going to sink into the ocean here. All right. We have our trench right here, which is a deep part of the ocean caused by subduction. And you have this active. So this area here. This area right here in this rectangle is drawn. That is our active Connell margin. You have, why is it volcanism? Well, the subducting plate goes down, goes deeper, gets forced under, goes down to a certain depth, usually about 150 kilometers, where it gets hot enough to uh, basically have the water molecules in the plate um, uh, dissociate from the rock and allow the melting point to lower, so lower melting point or MP. And then we get right here, about 150 kilometers, we get melting. And up comes the magma, and we get beautiful uh, volcanic uh, ranges and chains um, that are constantly active. And we know this, well, main, the main example is the ring of fire around the Pacific Ocean. So that involves an active uh, margin with subduction, with melting of the something plate slab, the cold slab. And create magma that rises up through the continent, funnel crust, and eventually forms volcanoes. All right, so that one's pretty simple. And we're going to do a video just on convergent, convergent plate boundaries, just for you, because there are three main types, and uh, we have to discuss all of them because they all play a huge role. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment. Please subscribe if you like it and support the channel. And uh, I will see you soon in a new video.